Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's project is going to be educational training in a classroom type environment in which we're going to be training on how to size a B-Vent gas appliance uh, system for two appliances in common. So that is what is going to be on. It's a good video if you're um, trying to design your own um, natural gas appliance system where you've got uh, more than one appliance and it would be good if you're an inspector. That would be, this video will be beneficial for you. With that said, I am trying going to try to give you really good content in the shortest time frame possible and I only ask for you to do one thing for me and that is to smash that like button down right now. And with that, let's go on with the show. Okay, let's get into it. Common B vent sizing for two natural gas appliances. Here's our scenario. We have a current setup. The building has a 200 gallon water heater, single vented water heater. And um, it has a barometric damper that is right there, which helps for the dilution air cooling down the uh, vent pipe from getting too hot. Also, the barometric damper will also allow the system to run more smoothly in case there's different draft draft going on, especially if you have a high wind hitting the uh, termination cap up, up above the uh, roof line there, and which would cause flame disruption. But by having that uh, barometric damper, it helps keep a smooth draft on the system and keeps that going. This is a 200 gallon water heater. This water heater is over 20 years old. This water heater is going to fail eventually. It's going to start leaking and it's going to require replacement. I do not want to replace this 200 gallon water heater with another 200 gallon water heater. It would, it would cost a fortune. It's, you have to crane this thing onto the roof. It's difficult to move a 200 gallon water heater. What I am proposing, and by the way, the, the capacity required to meet the building, we don't need 200 gallons. I believe this was oversized from day one for the property that this is installed at. I believe we will be perfectly fine with 100 gallons of capacity. So I'm proposing to design a system that has two 50 gallon water heaters, both of them natural draft, and they're going to be, the water will be piped in series so that way the hot water will come out of one, enter the cold water of the second one, and you'll have 100 gallons of capacity, but with two separate appliances. That is why the venting system is, has to be designed and installed for two appliances. This is what we are proposing to do for our exercise right now. To start this endeavor, I needed to get some measurements of the room where I'm proposing to put these water heaters. The room dimensions are, well, the current water heater is seven feet tall and from the top of the water heater to the ceiling is another seven feet. So we know that our overall dimensions of the room are 14 feet. Also, the water heater that I'm proposing to install in, in for our new setup is has a total height of five feet. Now, on my case, I drew this out in a PowerPoint presentation. You could just take a scratch notepad and just quickly draw out a room with a, the with a floor, put two water heaters in there, get a couple of vent connectors going on to your vent pipe, and just get a rough idea of what it is that you want to design. And then kind of get some measurements so that when as we look at our venting tables, we can then take and plug these numbers into our vent tables. That's why we need to come up with some type of a design idea of what it is that we want to install. And that's what this proposal is all about, to get you started so that we 
have a framework to to our base to work off of so we can get our system and get it designed the books that we're going to be using well the, the book that we're going to be using is the 2012 uniform mechanical code <clears throat> another book that you could use with similar vent tables is found in the international fuel gas code i will have links below down below for you to acquire these books if you so choose now here looking at this table we need to see if we are, can meet the be code compliant in 802.10.7 this is a single wall connector the maximum horizontal length of a single wall connector shall be 75 percent of the height of the chimney or vent except for an engineered system so let's get our dimensions the water heater on the right has a, a little bit longer horizontal so we're going to use this one as the example the horizontal in this case is 2.5 feet of the of length of the total vent connector length the total developed height now when you look at this section of the code look at the terminology that they use the maximum horizontal length of a single wall connector shall be 75 percent of the height of the chimney or vent well it should really say 75 percent of the total developed height really should say that just for to make it a hundred percent clear where you are to get your measurements from you are to get your measurements from the draft hood flu collar up to the point of termination in our case that is 12 feet the total developed height is going to be uh, well for using this one here as the example the the eight feet plus the four feet uh, but either way they're both the same the total developed height is 12 feet and you want to get 75 percent of the total developed height which is nine feet nine feet is greater than 2.5 feet so we are code compliant for section 802 10.7.1 so we are code compliant here easily we pass that with flying colors let's go down to the next code, uh, table table 803.2.1 it tells you that the diameter of the vent pipe if it's th a three inch diameter you have a maximum connector horizontal length well we, we already said that the horizontal length is uh, only 2.5 feet so we easily meet this uh, co code compliant if we wanted to install three inch diameter pipes our system is not code compliant with three inch pipes and i'll show you that later on as we go through the presentation that is why i put four inch pipe even for the vent connector here the system that i'm that we're ultimately going to design is going to be four inch pipe here and a five inch common vent here and i'll show you per code why those are the numbers okay now we are looking at a vent table for the first time and we need to confirm that we are looking at the appropriate vent table for the system that we're trying to design this is going to be a type b double wall vent the number of appliances is going to be two or more which is good because we want two water heaters type of the appliance type is a category one because we're dealing with natural draft water heaters the appliance vent connection is single wall metal connector which is what i told you i wanted to install for my application now when you look at that table and you look at a three inch diameter pipe the maximum that it can handle is 39,000 BTUs. Oh, and the, the reason why we're in this column, let's 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 go through this. Okay. When you look back here, the the overall developed height from the flu hood collar to termination is 12 feet for both the left hand and right hand water heaters. So when I look at the table here, I'm going to go uh, 10 feet would be too short, so I go to the next highest one, which is 15 feet now for the connector rise the connector rise i have a choice of one two or three well the connector rise is taken from where 
the flu gas, where the distances from the flu collar, uh, the flu vent uh, right there where it's open to the atmosphere, where it connects on to the vent. You take that pipe in the center of there and you measure it from there to there. The water heater on the left is four feet. The water heater on the right is five feet. Well, in both cases, those numbers are greater than three feet. So we're going to use the 15, three row to get our data from with this table because we have two water heaters, two appliances. Now, when you look at the three inch diameter pipe, can we get away with that? The appliance would have to have 39,000 uh, BTUs or less to get away with that. Well, our appliance is 40,000 BTUs. So it is greater than this number. So we would be not code compliant. We're missing it by 1000 BTUs. So we missed it by just that much. So we have to step up to the next size, four inch, and we look over there and that will give us 70,000 BTUs uh, to accommodate our drafting for our pipe size. So we know that this pipe and this pipe need to be four inch as depicted right here, four inch for that pipe and four inch for that pipe. <clears throat> now it might be a little hard to see, but right here, oops, sorry about that. But right here, you, you see that I've got a total combined 80,000 and five inch. Well, where did you get the five inch? Well, if you look at the four inch column, we know that we cannot accommodate 80,000 BTUs because now we need to add up the two 40,000 BTU appliances that totals 80,000 BTU. So when you look at the table, you have to go from four inch, step it up to the next size, five inch, that will give you 109,000 BTU exceeding the 80,000 BTU. So for the vent connector, we can get away with four inch pipe, which you can see here, four inch pipe and four inch pipe. And for the blue vent pipe, that one will have to be five inch. The common pipe will have to be five inch. So that would be a properly designed system and that would meet code. Okay, now I wanna show you a comparison vent table just so that you can see the comparison from a, from a number of appliances being a single appliance to the vent table that we just looked at, which was two or more. Now, if we were to install just one water heater and it was gonna be a type B double wall gas vent connected to a single wall uh, vent connector, uh, appliance type is category one, but it's just a single. And another thing that they do here in the tables is they, they still want you to get the total developed height of the system and put that in here. But you'll notice on this table, it says that it is lateral in feet. They wanna know what the lateral is in feet of this system on the single uh, connected appliance. But when you have two or more appliances, they wanna know what the connector rises. Those dimensions are different dimensions. You got, you have to know how to get those dimensions. Now, the connector rise is taken from the draft flu hood uh, collar right there to where it enters into the, where the vent connector enters into the vent pipe taken at the midway point. That would be the connector rise. For the lateral distance, that distance is the distance when the vent connector goes from the vertical to the horizontal. Now I know this pipe is approximately a 45 degree angle pipe, but you actually need to know what the dimension is from here to where it enters into the vent. Now I gave you those dimensions on this screen. It, the dimension of the, the lateral on the water heater on the left is 2.25 feet and the dimension of the lateral on the right is 2.5 feet. And that is how you get those dimensions. So we know that we are, so now we have to determine, and this is just for, just for an example sake purposes here, a single appliance, so it's not vented in common, so just one water heater. 
we'll use the example of the water heater on the right. That actually, it doesn't even matter because the total developed height on our system was 12 feet. So we know that we're greater than 10. We have to step it down to 15 uh, feet to look at, at this section here. Now for the lateral distance that in feet, that distance there is going to be between zero feet and 15 feet for the lateral. In our case, it was about 2.5. So we're greater than two feet. So we know that we just have to step it up to the next highest size, which is five feet lateral. So this is the row that we're gonna look at. We already know that our system does not have a fan, so we're gonna ignore these columns under fan. And we're gonna go to the natural gas column here, maximum, go down to this row here, and that equals 44,000 BTUs. Well, our water heater, if you remember, is only 40,000 BTU water heater. So if the vent table under a single appliance will give you 44,000, if you only had one water heater, you could use a three inch vent all the way and terminate out to the roof. So it's just, what's interesting here is that you could get away with it with the three inch system and the and the vent table with two or more, which is how I want it designed, uh, tells you that you cannot use a three inch vent pipe. <clears throat> Another thing that's really of interest here is that how the vent table on the single has what's known as lateral and the vent table on the two or more category tells you uh, and asks for the connector rise. So I've already demonstrated to you exactly what the difference is and where to get your measurements. Just make sure that whatever system you're trying to look at to observe if it's code compliant or designing on your own, that you're using the appropriate vent table. It's critical that you do that to get a proper code compliant design. Let's get into vent termination. The picture here that's on the right hand side, see that um, vent termination circled in red? That's the vent termination of the current water heater. Now, for our code sections for B vent termination over here on figure 31, we want to see if there is a structure less than eight feet to the vent pipe. In our case, I don't see a structure within eight feet unless you consider the solar panels structure. That's a gray area for me. I'm, for sake of argument, let's say that that is not um, part of the structure. Then we would look at figure F30, which is the next slide down. If otherwise, if you were to consider that part of the structure, then we would do the 210 rule. Anything within 10 feet of the vent termination has to have a two foot clearance. Now, mind you, for my installation, I plan on installing three feet high anyways, which looks, I didn't take a measurement here, but looks like it would, would be about two feet higher than this solar panel, approximately. So I'll be just about, even if you did consider the solar panel for my installation, it would still be code compliant. Now, here is table eight, B vent termination height. If you have the roof slope flat to 612, which we are clearly a flat roof, then you only need a minimum height of one feet, which is what looks like the previous installer did for the water heater 20 years ago. They installed it one foot high. Again, I plan on doing it three foot high. This solar panel was added since this was installed. So that is, this is newer uh, compared to when the vent termination was installed. Okay, that's gonna conclude this video. If you got any information out of this video at all, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that like button for me right now. Subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, where I have other videos specifically about venting gas appliances. I will catch you on the flip side.